I'm Bill Snodgrass, and in this episode of the World Around Us, we're going to look at we're going to look at conservation of matter, um, and uh, something that is not exactly 100% obvious, but it's, it's sort of intuitive because we know that matter cannot be created nor destroyed. So the amount of matter in a in a substance is its mass, and the way that mass is distributed within the substance creates a density. But the distribution of the of the electrons, protons, and neutrons. Um, it is is not necessarily going to conserve when you take this plus this and put them together, especially in, in the case we're doing with uh, sodium chloride salt and water. So the, the salt is going to dissolve into the the water. So we're, we're going to have we're going to see the the total amount of matter should go from the individuals to the mixture. But the volume of the individuals in the mixture is not necessarily going to be conserved. And that's what we're expecting to see. So the worksheet to this video is uh, linked down in the description. And it's going to go th walk you through the steps in order to, to uh, replicate this. If you're doing this in class, you want to watch the beginning of the video and get the setup part. And then if you're going to do the uh, results virtually, then you watch the second half of the video. So there's two parts to this video, the, the setup and then the the results. So we're going to start with graduated cylinder number one and into it we're going to place one one milliliter of salt. But first we're going to we're going to zero the scale and then we've zeroed the scale so when we put the salt in here we'll be able to find the mass of the salt. So we're going to we're going to use the scupula to try to bring the salt level up to approximately one, really close to one. So that brings it up almost like to a half. And we're going to bring it right up to the one line. Now normally you would, you would find salt, you would find the mass of the salt, not the volume. But for the purposes of this, uh, we wanted to, with the solution, we wanted to do that. Putting this on the scale, I, I come up with 1.5 grams of salt and one, one milliliter, which is a cc, a cubic centimeter, one milliliter cc. All right, so we have the, the salt, 1.5 grams. Into, into graduate cylinder two, we're going to put that on the scale and zero it. So we're going to put into, into this, we're going to put 9 milliliters of water. And I have a pipette so I can make that as, as, as accurate as I can. Very accurate. 9 milliliters. And I'm reading a liquid from the bottom of the meniscus. I'm going to put a couple more drops in until I get that meniscus up to the, ten line, the, the 9 with that and just a little bit too much all right so now we have the the water measured to nine milliliters and that gives us a mass of 9.11 so we'll call it 9.1 and that is nine milliliters all right so that's the setup so in, in the next part of the experiment, we're going to zero this one. We're going to zero uh, graduated cylinder three. We find the zero on that. Then we're going to put the, the salt in and then the water in, and we're going to remass it. So that will be in the results section. It will be a short results section. All right, here we go. If you are doing this in class, you're ready to go begin. All you have to do is put them together. After you've done these steps, put them together and find the mass. If you are doing the lab virtually, stick around. Here we go. We'll do that next. All right, for the results, we're going to take the, uh, the salt and put it in. So we get all of the salt into the third graduated cylinder. And we're going to put the liquid, the water, we're going to put that in as well. So we have 1 plus 9 on the volumes. 1 plus 9. All 
All right, so after we got all the water out of the water cylinder, um, we're coming up with 2.59, 2.59 uh, gram, 10.59. That, that, is, that is pretty close. All right, so those were our results. We, we were able to, to get conservation on the scale. However, if your results come out a little bit different, there's a possibility that maybe you have a little bit of liquid still stuck or a little bit of, of the salt that's still stuck in, and, and it just, you just can't quite get it out. And, and if that's the case, then, then you may not have a perfect you know, mathematical proof of conservation, but it, it should be very close given the, the fact that you may have some error resulting in you know, experimental technique and, and, uh, and that. So, um, uh, so I just wanted to in, insert that here in the, in the video as, as part of the discussion. So there, there may be some sources of error that led to the, the, the masses not adding up after you've done the experiment. Now, with the, the liquid, uh, we, we started with uh, almost one milliliter and we added it to nine milliliters. And that brings us up to, after the salt is dissolved, brings us up to 9.7 milliliters of liquid. 9.7 is our measured amount, 9.7. So whereas the mass was conserved in this demonstration, the volume was not. The volume was not conserved. All right, so um, looking at the results again, we started with 1.5 grams of salt and 9.1 grams of uh, water, and that should have added to 10.6 um, on our scale, uh, we, 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 we masked that out. It came out to be within our range of error 10.6. So, so that's our demonstration. Uh, even though the matter changed form, we went from uh, most of the salt being a solid to a lot of the salt being in solution. Uh, there's still some some of the solid in the bottom of the of the of the graduated cylinder, but the the salt that's missing is in solution. Even though it changed form, the mass is conserved. The mass is is conserved across that solution process. So starting with 1.5 grams and 9.1 grams, we end up with 10.6 grams, and that is conservation of matter. Matter cannot be created nor destroyed. Now, the same, this is a physical, a physical reaction where we have made a solution, a physical change. Um, the same would be true if it were a chemical change. If we start with some number of grams of a uh, reactant and combine it with some other number of grams, uh, we're going to end up with the same outcome. The mass is going to be conserved across a chemical reaction as well. That's it. Hopefully this was useful. Hopefully this is somewhat interesting. Thanks for watching. We'll see you. Cl uh, click the like button, subscribe to the channel, all that stuff. See you in the next one.